In this worksheet, we have a list of sales orders with quantity, cost, and amount for each order. And at the top, we have the sum, so the total quantity, cost, and amount. There's another cell where we can select a different function. I could select average, and now it shows the average of each of those columns instead of the sum. There are no macros in here. This is all done with functions, and we'll see how this works and how you can create one in your own file. Here's another workbook with the same table set up, and we're ready to put in the totals at the top, and then create a drop-down list here where you can select a function. This table, if I click in it, you can see the table tools on the ribbon and the design tab. This is a formatted Excel table, and I've called it sales table. To create a total for the quantity, I'm going to use the subtotal function. So in this cell, I'll type equal subtotal open bracket. And when I do that, you can see the list. If I type a one now, I'm going to be creating an average. To create a sum, I can use a nine. And in newer versions of Excel, you can also use 109, which will give you a sum of any visible rows, whether the rows were hidden with a filter or manually hidden. So I'm going to use 109. The next thing is a comma and the reference. So what do we want? To subtotal and I'm going to select these quantity cells and there you'll see the name of the sales table and the column name quantity. Close the bracket and press tab to move to the cost. I'm going to drag that across and now it's summing each column. So this is the sum of the amount, cost, and quantity. Now instead of typing this 109 we're going to create a drop-down list here that lets us select a function and then it will put in the appropriate number for that function. And if I go into help for the subtotal function, I can see the list. So you can copy and paste from the help window, and paste it onto the worksheet, and then use the functions that you're interested in and delete the others. So on this sheet, I've now added a list of the numbers and the name for each number. I'm going to give an Excel name to this range of cells where the numbers are. Select all these numbers, click in the name box, and we'll call this F-U-N-C-N-U-M for function numbers. And then press enter to finish naming those cells. Where the names are, we'll select those, click in the name box again, we'll call this F-U-N-C list for the function list. Press enter. So just for testing, I'm going to type sum. Now here, we're going to create a formula, so type equal we're going to use index to find a number. So index, open bracket. We want to look in a particular range of cells. So we're going to look in this list of numbers. And there's the name that we created a couple of minutes ago. Type a comma. And we're going to find the number in here based on the function that was selected. So we'll have to get a match which gives us a number that a particular item is in the list. So we've entered sum here and that would be the fifth item in this list. So type match, open bracket, the lookup value is whatever is in this cell, and then a comma, and the lookup array, so where should it look for that name, is in this list of functions, comma, and we want an exact match, so we'll double click here to put a zero, close that bracket for match, close the bracket for index, and press enter. So based on what we typed here, we selected 109, which is sum. So over here, if I type max, 104, so that's giving us the number of our function. To change our subtotals now, we don't want to have to type a number here. We want it to use this number. So I'm going to highlight this 109 and click on this cell with our selected function and press the F4 key to lock that in and press Enter. Drag that across and we're going to have the maximum, so the highest number in this column, is 669.9, which is rounded to 670. If I type sum, now we're getting the total. And if I type min, the lowest amount. Instead of typing, we can create a drop down list. Go to the data tab, data validation, allow a list. And in here, type an equal sign and press F3 to see a list of the names in your workbook. The function list is what we want. Click OK. Okay, and now we have a drop down, so I can select count, 
the max, the average. To download the sample file for this video, and for more Excel tips and tutorials, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.